What is up guys, Ice Cold Cacus here. Thank you so much for stopping by, and today we have the complete leveling guide for the brand new Beyond Light expansion for Destiny 2, showcasing how to increase your power level as fast and efficiently as possible so you can be ready for the brand new Beyond Light raid when it launches, and so, Let's get started. But just before we do, a huge amount of people watching are not yet subscribed. Take a quick second, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell to be notified of content similar to this in the future, and you can always unsubscribe later. All right, now in Beyond Light, there is a lot of important things to know about. So firstly, there are two different ways to increase your power level. Firstly, through your artifact and gaining experience, and secondly, through actually getting gear and equipping that higher power level gear. Let's talk about the first way because it's going to come up first. It's what you want to be doing right away as soon as you start playing. So when you launch up Beyond Light, it's going to put you on Europa automatically and you play through that first story mission. Now as soon as that's done, you're still on Europa and you're then able to talk to Varix and continue progressing the story, but I wouldn't do that. As soon as possible, head to the tower and go to to Zavala's quarters, his office, and there you can pick up your artifact for this season, Season of the Hunt, so you can start leveling it up and gaining access to the mods it provides. Now some more stuff you want to do right off the bat to increase your experience gains. If you paid for this season, you can simply open the box at level 1. That comes with a large experience boost, you may want to do that. Another thing, masterwork a ghost shell as quickly as possible. That's going to let you put on a big expensive mod that goes up to 10% experience gains. And actually you can find even more. I have a 12% I found out in the wild. So obviously putting that on right away is very important. But also it unlocks an additional mod slot when it's masterworked. And you actually have mods that drop more legendary armor when you're farming certain activities. Obviously great uh, for leveling up in the soft cap, which we'll talk about in a sec. One more thing the fire team experience buff. So as you level up your seasons pass, this is going to increase experience gains for your fire team, not yourself. So you may want to hold on to your bounties until you get into someone's squad who has the shared wisdom buff and then pop them all. When you're popping a lot, even just two or 4% extra experience can make a difference. All right, now moving on from there, let's talk about increasing your power level by getting gear. And when you're doing so, there are some very important power level milestones to know about because how you level up is going to change dramatically depending on what milestone you have reached. There's the soft cap, the hard cap, and the pinnacle cap. So firstly, let's talk about the soft cap. Now this goes from the base power level of 1050 and goes up to 1200. Now when you're in the soft cap, everything that's dropping is increasing your power level. So random blues, random legendaries, end of activity rewards, all of that stuff will increase your power level. Notable exceptions, however, include vendor gear. If you go to Zavala and give him your Vanguard tokens, the gear you get is going to be always 20 power under what you are. Also, withdrawing from the collections will always be 1050. What all of that means is that because everything ascends you, the best way to blitz through the soft cap is to simply get as much gear as possible. And boy, do I have a farming strategy for you guys. Now, importantly, you do want to focus on doing a lot of stuff like the Beyond Light campaign that you're gonna have to do anyways, right? You're going to get a lot of random blues, a lot of random rewards when you're doing that, probably not worth getting all the way up to 1,200 and then doing the campaign because a lot of those rewards at that point will be useless. However, 
most people are going to find that either they need some leveling up during the campaign because the enemies get pretty hard pretty fast or they beat the campaign and are still not quite at 1200. So the farming strategy surrounds the fact that wanted enemies seem to drop a guaranteed legendary. So, head to the Trossland in the EDZ, go to the left, and go into the Widow's Walk Lost Sector. Within here, the enemies are super low level, you can skip all of them to the end. It's a really, really small room, you simply kill the boss. Again, that boss is a guaranteed legendary drop, but it gets better. Often, I will kill all of the different nightmare shanks that spawn. Those guys, because they are powerful enemies, they're very likely to drop blues and even purples themselves. And then you can open the chest, and that lost sector chest has a pretty good chance to drop a blue as well. You're going to see in the background gameplay, firstly, you can complete these lost sectors in like 45 seconds a minute or even less if you're really, really optimal. They are incredibly quick. And again, because of all these different enemies, the guaranteed legendary plus the other chances for stuff, I'm getting like three, sometimes four drops in 45 seconds. That is absolutely insane. This is, in my opinion, the best way to increase your soft cap level fast. And the best part is that it's super easy to do solo. And importantly, one of the reasons I'm recommending this and then just doing the campaign is the fact that you kind of want to avoid other things because you really don't want to complete powerfuls when you're in the soft cap because powerful and pinnacle drops are going to be the only things that get you above that 1200 point. So let's move on and talk about leveling during the hard cap. Now getting powerfuls and pinnacles for the most part is pretty obvious. The directory tells you where to go. However, something not so obvious is the fact that increasing your rankings in Gambit with your Infamy rank in Normal Crucible and especially in Competitive is also going to get you powerful drops when you reach those tiers of progression. So right here in the background gameplay, you are seeing the rewards from one, I kid you not, one comp game win. Like that was my first win this season and I am showered with rewards, including multiple powerful drops. So even if you don't like comp, even if you don't like the Crucible, even if you don't like Gambit, just going in there for a few games, leveling up a few times off the start is often going to give you a ton of powerful drops and very much be worth it. Now keep in mind that at this point, it's often very RNG dependent because you'll get powerful gauntlets, a powerful helmet, a powerful heavy, things are going well, until you get a powerful helmet again. And maybe it's one power level above your previous helmet, that's often referred to as a wasted drop. However, there's some kind of lesser known tactics you can do to really reduce the RNG frustration and get you ahead. So firstly, utilize the armor within your season's pass to make up for a piece of gear lagging behind because that armor drops at your exact power level, if not one more sometimes. So if your average power level is 1210, but you've got like a 1205 chest piece, you just simply can't get a chest piece. Well, withdraw the chess piece from the season's pass. It will be 1210, exactly. So it will give you a five power level boost from that thing lagging behind. Another thing that can do this is simply paying attention to what kind of powerful drops there are. A great example is the Salvation's Grip Exotic Grenade Launcher. If you want to know how to get that, I've done a guide, it's linked right above, but that is a powerful drop and you know exactly what that is. It's a heavy grenade launcher. So it may be smart to save the final part of that quest to when your heavy is lagging behind. So you can simply complete it, get a guaranteed powerful plugging that gap, and that will really help your leveling process. But another huge tip, like this is gonna be something the people who get to the top light levels in the world in the first few days are doing, is the fact that you can equalize your gear with random drops. Now, what I mean by that 
is once you get past the soft cap, you're actually not quite done with blues and random legendaries because they can drop of level and you're going to see that within the background gameplay. So what this means is that just like how you can withdraw your season's pass armor to plug gaps, you can also plug gaps by simply going back to that lost sector we showed earlier and farming the crap out of drops. And you can see this process literally working in the background gameplay. It happened perfectly during my leveling process. Because as you can see, I got to 1200, so I started to do my powerfuls. And you'll see, you know, my kinetic, my energy, my helmet, my gauntlets are higher than 1200, but everything else is 1200. But my average overall power level is now 1201. So that means if I go to that lost sector and I get loot, as you can see, sometimes it's 1201. So what I can do is I can just keep farming this and eventually if I replace those 1200s with 1201s, again, as you can see, I go up to 1202 average gear score. And this is huge. I essentially got a free power level without wasting a powerful drop. In fact, the next powerful drop I get is going to be even better because now it's based on 1202 instead of 1201. So, obviously quite useful when used properly, but when is the proper time to do this? Well, the magic number in terms of power leveling is 12, and that means when you have 12 total power levels above your average power level, then you go up by one. So in my example, I'm 1201 average, then my kinetic, the dire promise, is three above, the energy is two above for five total, the helmet is another three above for eight total, and then the arms are another two above for 10 total. And then you'll notice I switch my power, so I'm at 11, and I switch my legs, and then I go up. You'll see the 1207, which is counting artifact, go to 1208. But then, of course, we have the pinnacle cap, and this goes from 1250 to 1260. And this is very simple. The only way to ascend here is by getting pinnacle gear. So the weekly strike, crucible, and gambit rewards were actually upped to pinnacles, but most notably, you're going to have nightfall 100Ks as pinnacle, the trials of Osiris flawless chest reward, and raid loot as pinnacle. Obviously, that's only going to matter after the raid is completed. So, whew, one more thing to talk about. I know it's a big video, but I guarantee a lot of other leveling guides won't come close to explaining these things. Now, we have the issue of multiple characters. What do you do there? Well, firstly, having multiple characters is always good. What it lets you do is level up one character quite a bit and then when you switch to your other character you get to transfer the weapons and so that other character gets a head start. It's getting gear in relation to those weapons and it can often get even higher than your first character and your third character even higher. Now traditional wisdom to get raid ready, blah, raid ready is to do the character that you actually want to bring into the raid last, right? Because he would be the highest. But this time, because the raid is much later on the 21st, we have a reset. So actually, if you have three characters, you want to start on the character you want to be raid ready, then switch to a second character, then a third, and then when reset hits, you start on that third, you go back to your second, and you end back on your raid character. It's kind of like a boomerang effect, but it lets you gain the highest overall power level possible to get absolutely ready. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.